I'm Dr. Maynard Miller, director of the Glaciological and Arctic Sciences Institute at the University of Idaho. I'd like to tell you about an opportunity for a unique field of science adventure experience in Alaska this coming summer. One which makes it possible for undergraduate university and upper level high school students, some with National Science Foundation scholarships, to participate in a major Arctic expeditionary experience on North America's fifth largest ice field. This is the Juneau Ice Field in the Alaska-Canada Boundary Range. There you can experience remarkable personal and academic growth and outdoor challenges in one of the world's most magnificent and inspiring wilderness regions. Share with me now a few scenes from recent PBS and other video footage taken on this exciting program. It's the only one of its kind in the world. Further details will be given at the end of the presentation. The Juneau Ice Field, a 1,500 square mile sheet of ice. It is a forbidding place where time seems to stand still. Here the glaciers dominate as they have for millions of years. The blue ice is ever moving, yet its passing is not going unnoticed. Perched on the edge of a lonely outcrop, a group of scientists and students have gathered, led by a man who can truly call this place home. Well, we'll be there in a minute. The ice field first called Dr. Maynard Miller back in 1946. He's been back every summer since. For the past 30 years, his eight-week seminar on Arctic science has attracted scientists and students from around the world. Miller has two goals, to teach these kids something about science and something about themselves. Many of them often don't seem to come with very much walking around sense, but by the time they get through with two months in the expedition, they've developed a lot of common sense. They're the brightest kids in America. 55.2. Good to see you, Alex. Welcome home. Well, wonderful. it's good wonderful. to be back. Miller was 18 himself when he first walked the ice. His young colleagues are learning many of the same lessons their teacher did so long ago. Science is more than just, uh, you know, books and numbers. It's, it's an art almost. I mean, it's a way of getting problems solved. It's a way of helping our society. And, and I think I've learned a lot about that. To Dr. Miller, the ice field is like a giant mystery novel, giving up its secrets just one page at a time. But he believes he's read enough of the glacier's story to draw a very disturbing conclusion. For the past 20 years, there has been a dramatic increase in snowfall on the ice field. Miller believes it's an indication of a global climate change caused by pollution, the greenhouse effect. I am relatively convinced that global warming is the bait noir, the black beast, that is causing the main changes on the Juneau ice field. I would say within several years, to five years, we will have conclusive evidence to reinforce our inclination in that belief at the present time. Eight tenths. The ice field still holds many secrets, and from time to time, it still calls Maynard Miller. And it is then, he says, he sees his world for the first time again, not as a scientist, but as a man. You get at peace with yourself and you begin to realize that you're a very fortunate person to be alive on this planet. What is different between this program and uh, a normal university type program, because we are dealing essentially with undergraduate and graduate students as well as senior scientists, is that on a university campus we're always trying to bring nature into the classroom or into the laboratory. We do just the opposite. We bring the student into nature, and that makes all the difference. Okay. Have a good trip and uh, keep together. Remember, there are bears up there. Each summer, students and professors from across the United States and other countries gather in Juneau for research as part of the Juneau Ice Field Research Program. Many hike to the ice field. They're all attracted here because of the research, and the research continues because this ice field is such an accurate barometer of worldwide climactic changes. The glaciers that stem from the Juneau ice field are acutely sensitive to climatic change, far more than those farther inland in northern BC and in the Canadian Rockies, 
The Mendenhall Glacier, for example, in the past 240 years has had 16 major pulsations. Inland 500 miles and up in the Yukon, the Logan Mountains and the Kaziar Mountains, the small glaciers there, in that period of 240 years have only had two fluctuations, two moraines. So you can see we're very sensitive to relatively small climatic changes that have great global significance. Some 20 research camps have been established across the ice field. At larger ones, like Camp 10, 50 people can be accommodated. Keeping everything operating smoothly at the camps requires a lot of coordination. 1710, uh, 1710, uh, our plan for your schedule is to send two people to your station on the return flight tonight. We want that helicopter in as late as possible because it lasts, it's a good day. We've been fixing that thing every other day now for a week. <laughs> yeah, pull a starter off, bring a starter off. Let's find some Dacron or nylon line instead of the manila that's on there. After housekeeping details, classroom lectures are another regularly scheduled activity. What we see, the energy we see, comes from the sun. Comes down, does some of it penetrate the clouds? A lot of it's reflected off the top, but some of it penetrates the clouds. Comes down to the ice surface, and what happens to it there? A lot of it, how much of it? 50 to 90 percent of it is reflected back up and of course lights the bottoms of the clouds. When maintenance and lectures are completed, it's into the field for a wide variety of research, including gathering meteorological records of the ice field. We're using uh, standard meteorological instruments, thermometers, psychrometers, maximum thermometers, thermographs, barographs, uh, wind measuring instruments, Scientists are also using computers. What you see here is the temperature data for the last six months at this station. It turns out that the Gulf of Alaska and the type of weather that emanate from it control and help modify the global circulation patterns, especially in the lower 48. So in fact, this is one area that due to the its proximity to the Gulf and the continent is very significant in the global circulation model. My particular project is something that hasn't been done in the, before in this area. And so what I'm interested in is I'm interested in the insect fauna of the area. Because these are animals that, you know, are very, very sensitive to changes in environment. And so if you're dealing with insects, the changes are very quick. And you can record these, and you can anticipate them. You can make some predictions of what is going on. And if there's some problems developing, you may be able, in certain cases, to take ameliorating action. Seismographs are used to record ice movement. After the drum paper is smoked, a small pin records the shakes. Here you see a large earthquake. It comes in fairly abruptly and then gradually dies out. Seismology and, and glaciology are are fairly new as being applied to each other. So one thing you can do is, is go to areas that you know are well crevassed and try to identify what crevassing events look like on the, the seismograph. Geophones buried a foot beneath the surface pick up the sounds that are recorded on the seismograph. See these, these slashes right here, the short bursts of energy are quite possibly crevassing events. And so, each summer, Miller, along with fellow scientists and students, return to the Juno Ice Field to continue this kind of research in a unique kind of program. And therefore, trying to compare it with other programs is difficult because this is the only program of its kind in the world. And it is, has the longest continuous record of scientific observations and measurements um, on a prototype uh, glacial system, such as the Taku Llewellyn Glacier System, of any place in North America.